Well, you want to start some physical activity, but not sure what to pick? A gym membership may not be your thing, and you don't feel like buying special equipment for training. Fine, no need to choose something complicated anyways. What matters is to stay consistent with whatever you pick. You can start with cardio, which includes swimming, running, walking, or cycling, as it's recommended, minimally 150 minutes a week. Cardio increases your heart rate and gets you in a good mood, even if you just take a walk on your own. Or, better yet, walking backwards, also called retro or reverse walk. It's a good way to turn off your autopilot and challenge your brain a bit more. When you start walking backward, your brain will get confused. It needs more time to process what exactly your body is trying to do. It might get frustrating at the beginning, as it goes with all new things you do that are not part of your routine. So why walk backward? Well, it doesn't sound like it, but it brings so many benefits. First, it boosts your attention. And yes, that's something we all need these days. It improves balance and stability. When you're doing retro walking, you take shorter and more frequent steps. That way, you reduce the burden on your joints and improve muscle endurance. It's good for posture, too, because you activate muscles that support your lumbar spine. You use nearly 40% more energy when you walk backwards compared to regular walking at the same speed, of course. And when you become better at traveling backward, why not progress to running? Or turn it into a challenge and start adding weights. Start at home or any indoor space where you feel safe and where you can remove potential obstacles. You'll also avoid crashing into someone. Ideally, you won't contort your body and you will resist the urge to look over your shoulder. Keep the chest and head upright. Reach back with a big toe for every step and roll through your foot from toe to heel. One study showed that participants who walked backwards imagined they were walking backward or even watched a video of other people doing it help them better recall events from the past compared to people who just sat still or walked forward. Anytime you do something different and change your perspective from the ordinary, you stimulate your brain. Sure, you confuse it at first, but it quickly adapts and creates new connections between neurons in a way it hasn't done before. That means it grows, similar to how, when you exercise, your muscles grow. So the brain needs its exercises too. One of them is using your non-dominant hand for some everyday things you do. It'll feel weird because you don't have that much control over your actions. Try to write with your non-dominant hand. Use it to control the television remote or the computer mouse. Pour milk or water, open jars, clean dishes, brush your teeth, butter toast, use a can opener, or eat with chopsticks. This might remind you how things look when you were first learning those things that are now simple. Tie your shoes, draw, or write. The non-dominant hand for many people is the left one, since about 90% of people are right-handed. Fun fact, there is about 1% of what we call ambidextrous people, ones with no dominant hand. That means they use both hands equally well, so there's no weird feeling when they can't be that precise with their movements. Sure, it's easy to navigate the streets of your neighborhood while driving around. But here's how you can challenge your brain. Draw a map of the town where you live using your memory only. Try to put all the major streets as well as local landmarks and everything else you can think of. When you force yourself to remember all those little details, you activate multiple areas of your brain. Once you finish, compare it to a real map. If it was too easy, pick an area you're less familiar with, like a map of the United States or Europe. Try to label every country or state. Uh Uh-uh, no cheating. What else to sharpen your mind? Well, when you take care of your body, you take care of your mind, too. Exercise makes you smarter. Our brains are shrinking as we age, but keeping the body in shape helps to slow this down. Eat more fresh vegetables and fruits, and generally pay more attention to improving your diet. Now, learning a new skill can really put your brain to work. Digital photography, playing an instrument, a new language, or basically learning any new hobby, you name it. It improves your memory. And as your skill becomes more advanced, your brain works harder and grows more. Socializing makes your brain more powerful, too. You engage different parts of it. Also, many social activities include some physical elements, like playing sports with your friends. 
soccer, basketball, tennis, you name it. Join a local walking group or a club where you can pursue your interests and stay in close touch with your family and friends. Meditate. It's an excellent exercise for our brain that people have been talking about and using for thousands of years. When you meditate, you turn off all things that distract you all the time. Your phone, primarily. Mindfulness meditation helps you focus and improves empathy, attention, and even immunity. It's possible it even boosts the capacity of your working memory. Set your sleep schedule right. Binging your favorite series or scrolling your phone feels the best at night when the rest of the world is quiet. But this disrupts your natural rhythm. When you're sleeping, your brain deals with all kinds of information it got during the day. It's like organizing important information and a whole cleanup process with unnecessary things. Good sleep helps with memory and enhances learning. You also know it can fix the entire following day and make you feel better from the morning. There are also interesting exercises you can try. Start with one where you lift your right elbow up and touch the opposite leg. Do it with the left one, too, and continue. What you're doing here are cross crawls. They're part of something called a brain gym. The point here is to improve the entire brain, learning through basic movements that are also simple and fun. Body parts below your neck are controlled by the opposite side of the brain. That means the right side of your brain has control over the opposite side of your body and vice versa. So this way, you get both sides of the brain to work together. Or try juggling. It's a way to encourage your brain to grow neural connections related to focus, memory, movement, and even vision. It builds your hand-eye coordination. You improve concentration and reflexes. It's a cool way to develop strategic thinking and analyze the steps, which are basically left-brain processes. And patience, of course, since it can be so frustrating at the beginning. Start with one ball or whatever you want to juggle. If you're just starting, try practicing over a couch or a table so you don't have to bend down all the time as the ball falls on the floor. Start with throwing the ball in the air a little bit over the tip of your head and catching it with your other hand. The second step includes one more ball. You can try to visualize two peaks. You can't toss both balls on the same peak, they'll collide. So, peak for the left ball is on the right side and vice versa. So, when one ball reaches its peak, it's the signal for you to toss the other one. Try to do just one turn without stopping. Repeat until you get comfortable enough to add the third one where you now juggle without stopping. After a while, juggling brings a calming effect on your body. And your brain gets benefits from practicing juggling even after a couple of weeks without doing it. Plus, you'll be more popular. Trust me. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.